The Western Schism, a split in the leadership in the Catholic Church, opened the door just wide enough to allow a pirate to rise up the ranks to Pope. Baldassare Casa, a pretty unholy figure known for seducing nuns and betraying his enemies or, you know, pirate stuff, reigned for five years as Pope John XXIII while the Catholic Church was in chaos with three popes taking the reign all at the same time and none of them willing to secede power. Today we're going to take a look at how a pirate became the Pope. But before we do, let's have a talk. I need you to subscribe. Oh, you did? Well, good for you. Now pack your rosary beads, we're going to the 1400s. In 1409, the Catholic Church done goofed up and found itself with three popes at the same time, Benedict XIII, Gregory XII, and Alexander V. All three claimed to be legitimately elected popes, which is not how elections work, and they each called the other heretics. The unorganized mess at the top of the church left them vulnerable for a less than reputable guy to come in and snatch the papacy. Casa was a supporter of Gregory XII, but in 1408, that messy man who lived for drama turned on Gregory and pushed for the Council of Pisa, which in turn elected Alexander V after he died in 1410. Casa said, I got this, and being a crooked and powerful cardinal, he grabbed the stole of Peter, claiming he would place it on the most deserving successor and naturally donned the stole himself himself and took the name Pope John XXIII. In order to understand where Casa's brash tendencies came from, we should start from the beginning. Casa was born about 1365 in the Bay of Naples to a family that seemingly loved a pirate, and Casa was reportedly no exception. Two of his brothers were executed for piracy by King Ladislaus of Naples, putting a real sour note on the Casa family pirate business. After leaving Ischia, Casa spent some years working as a condottere, or mercenary captain, before deciding to pursue a law degree at the University of Bologna. He didn't become a priest until his 30s, and it might be shocking to hear he wasn't a very noble one at that. At 32 years old, Casa became a cardinal, and from 1403 to 1408, Casa was the papal representative in Bologna, where he earned his law degree, and like any good Game of Thrones villain, saw chaos surrounding the church as an opportunity. In 1408, two rival popes dominated Europe and, like a bitter divorce, they were real catty about demanding allegiance from European rulers. Though Casa had once supported Pope Gregory XII, he quickly abandoned any loyalty to Gregory and urged the council to solve the problem of we just have too many popes themselves. Casa became an important figure at the 1409 Council of Pisa, which put him on the map and set the course for his rise to King Pope. Casa coerced both rival popes into using scare tactics, and when Gregory XII excommunicated him, Casa publicly burned the order by literally setting it on fire and not metaphorically shouting insults at it. And when Pope Benedict XIII's representatives asked for his protection and safe passage through Italy after Benedict himself was disowned by France, Casa very chill-like responded, if you come to Italy with or without safe passage, I'll burn you, cross me, and I'll set you straight on fire. After getting by in the 14th century without a pope in Rome, the Catholic Church now had an abundance of popes with the church divided between two of them. In 1378, Urban VI, the pope in Rome, claimed to be legitimately elected, but then again, Clement VII, the pope in Avignon, also said that he was legitimately elected. Of course, both popes claimed the other as being illegitimate. Europe split along territorial lines with the people rooting for their hometown popes. French and their allies were all in on the Avignon Pope, while the English and their allies fancied their boy from Rome, perfectly mirroring the political allegiances of the Hundred Years' War, which lasted from 1337 to 1453, or not a hundred years. By 1409, the church had been dealing with his messy pope drama for almost 30 years with the two rival popes. Finally, a group of cardinals called a council to resolve this once and for all. The Council of Pisa stated all of these popes were canceled and said both the Avignon Pope and the Roman Pope were illegitimate. In June of 1409, the two popes were declared by the council as schismatics and heretics and were both formally deposed. The council then elected a new pope, Alexander V, this didn't go down well with the two recently fired popes. Both refused to step down, and suddenly the church, who thought two popes was a burden, found themselves with three popes. Three rival popes were, frankly, too many popes in the kitchen, and the strain was a lot on the Catholic Church. Despite his reputation for being a real jerk, noted nun seducer Casa had the strongest following. Weird that out of too large a field of choices, the worst one just sort of sticks out and wins through the whole thing. 
Casa was the choice of the Council of Pisa, which represented a ton of powerful cardinals. And Casa, ever the survivor, was a strategic pope, aligning himself with the powerful German ruler Sigismund, and even helped him becoming something called the Holy Roman Emperor. Casa also pushed for conflict with one rival of Pope Gregory XIII's allies, Ladislaus of Naples. You would think these popes would pray for peace. The former pirate remained haunted by his poor reputation. As 18th century historian Edward Gibbon related, Casa seduced over 200 women and to say nothing of an alarming number of nuns. As mentioned, in trying to secure his position as only pope, Casa pushed for conflict with King Ladislaus of Naples because he was tight with Casa's papal rival, Gregory XIII. Casa teamed up with Louis II of Anjou, who wanted to seize the throne of Naples, and these holy rollers banded together and succeeded in pushing Ladislaus out of Naples. But salty Ladislaus bounced back, baby, and quickly rebuilt his army. Casa betrayed Louis because of course he did by offering a deal to Ladislaus. If the former king of Naples rejected Pope Gregory XII in favor of Casa, he'd receive money and land. In modern times, we commonly refer to this as bribery, which is, in the most generous terms, not very cool and not at all legal. Ladislaus took that pile of money and land and accepted the offer. However, he too turned into a real piece of human garbage and turned treacherous. In 1413, he turned his army against Rome, sacked the city, and forced his boy Casa to flee to Florence. In 1414, another board, the Council of Constance, formed to restore the schism, but Casa RSVP'd as maybe to this invitation, debating whether or not to grace the council with his presence. He only called the council after pressure from his buddy, German Emperor Sigismund, but he also thought he could benefit from the council and solidify his position. In his mind, he had the strongest claim to the pontificate. He was the consensus candidate from the Council of Pisa for crying out loud. But his family cautioned him to dial back on the confidence, allegedly warning him, you may go a pope and come back a private citizen. He could lose everything if he went to the council. But do you think our boy Casa was a man of accountability and consequences? He ignored the family warnings and appeared before the council. During the Council of Constance, the church finally addressed the elephant in the room. Three rival popes was not a desirable number of popes. Early in the process, things looked to be turning in favor of Casa, becoming the consensus choice. Most council members agreed that as the choice of the Council of Pisa, Casa had the strongest claim to the title, which is exactly what Casa had freaking said would happen. The Italians also backed Casa because they'd rather this non-seducing pirate be the Pope over some French guy, so the Avignon Pope was a hard pass for the Italians. Unfortunately for Casa, the French, the English, and the Germans split from his corner, arguing instead that all three Popes should just call it and abdicate. Don't worry, Casa took the L on this and quietly stepped down. Then, the man put on a costume and tried to escape like Bugs Bunny. The Council of Constance had enough of this riffraff and wasn't going to allow Casa to continue being Pope because they were not insane. Casa tried to negotiate, promising to resign if his two rival Popes also resigned. The Council somehow declined this super good offer and turned down his proposal, so Casa ran for it. He disguised himself as a private citizen and fled from Constance. His flawless plan was to disband the Council by denouncing its authority, or the equivalent of sending out an angry tweet. Instead, the council declared itself the supreme authority in the church and ordered Casa's capture. Casa was deposed on May 29, 1415, assuming that his really cool disguise didn't work as human beings are not cartoons. After he was charged at the Council of Constance, Casa was put under arrest. According to 18th century historian Edward Gibbon, the most scandalous charges were suppressed. The Vicar of Christ was only accused of piracy, so the nun stuff we're just gonna ignore. Casa was held prisoner by ex-best friend Emperor Sigismund until 1418 when he was released for ransom. Casa's successor, Pope Martin V, agreed to name Casa Cardinal Bishop of Tusculum, but only after a few months on the job, Casa passed away. While Casa was a prisoner of Emperor Sigismund, the council was still dealing with all of the fallout caused by the Western Schism. The council eliminated the other two popes and Gregory XII resigned the papacy on July 4, 1415. Pope Benedict XIII was a little salty and boldly demanded to be named successor. The council said no, and they tried him in absentia and deposed him on July 26, 1417, putting the final nail in the coffin of the Western Schism. The council did consider not naming a new pope at all and remaining the supreme authority over the church, but that instinct didn't last long. The council elected a new singular pope, Pope Martin V, in late 1417. The Western Schism left many Catholics wondering if popes were more trouble than they were worth. According to historian Marziah Gale, European Christians began to say, one pope is too much for the Catholic world. No pope would be even better. 
So what caused all this papacy drama in the first place? The Western Schism happened because of a power struggle between a pope and a king in the 14th century. In 1303, the conflict between Pope Boniface VIII and King Philip IV of France came to a head. Boniface claimed complete control over Europe, declaring he was more powerful than kings. Philip responded to this outrageous claim by sending men to kidnap Pope Thanos. The conflict between church and state set off the Avignon Papacy, wherein the Catholic Church relocated from Rome to Avignon, France. From 1309 to 1378, popes lived in Avignon and the French king extorted control over the church. When the last Avignon pope, Gregory XI, died shortly after moving the papacy back to Rome, things popped off and a crisis was created. The newly elected pope, Urban VI, alienated his cardinals who then fled back to France. Those cardinals elected their own damn pope and thus a schism was created. And only 13 years earlier, an agent of chaos was born that would upend the whole thing. Pour one out for Casa, the messy pope who lived for drama. So what do you think? One pope, two pope, the three ah, 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 popes. Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our weird history.